Today is Sunday, June 15th. I am back in studio and after Air India Flight 171, I have gone on a deep dive to bring us the latest information. We're going to be showing why the flaps were indeed deployed for takeoff. Then we're going to go into an even deeper dive on 787 systems and why the gear potentially shows what really went wrong on this tragic flight. So let's go ahead and get into it. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the channel. My name is Gary. I've been flying for over 18 years commercially, and I currently fly the Boeing 777. We're going to get into this accident review here and really talk about what we think happened. I'm going to compare some other YouTubers, including Captain Steve, and kind of expand on what he's saying and maybe show him some things that he may have not seen and see if that changes his mind and his opinion on things. But let's go ahead and get into it right away. Now, a lot of YouTubers, um, and including myself, I said that it the flaps appeared to be retracted. I now no longer believe that. If we want to go ahead and take a look, I think even uh, Max Afterburner, his YouTube channel, said it looked like the flaps were up from the video. Now that I've compared it to some other 787 takeoffs, I do not believe that. And, and you take that with the information that the flaps on the ground with the wing and the pictures after the crash, Appeared, at very least, the slats are deployed. That's the leading edge of the wing. And the flaps appear to be down too. And I think it's going to be a flaps five takeoff. And let's go ahead and compare. So let's watch this United, a uh, much clearer video of a 787 uh, taken off. Now, if you freeze this and look in and compare to both, as you can tell, it, it's very hard to tell. These The flaps are extended on the United. They also appear to be extended there. So I really don't think that had anything to do um, with the crash and takeoff. And so let's go ahead and move on to the next, though. So expanding on Captain Steve video, Steve on um, did a for initial video and then the second video. His second video, he correctly described that the rat was out. That's the Ram Air Turbine. And funny enough, I just did a video on what happens if you lose all power and that how the rat is deployed. And you can find that video here on my channel. It was the on the Gimli glider. But either way, uh, Captain Steve points out that the rat was deployed and he now is in the camp of that is a double engine failure. Captain Steve goes on to talk about what the rat sounds like and he shows a video comparing the rat out on another plane. And now that we have the audio of a better video of the original crash of Air India, you can hear that. And I totally agree with that. But here's where I think that maybe I could add to that. My thought is if indeed you're going down and you're trying to apply full power, if it was not a double engine failure, all you hear is that rat and it's quiet. If you listen to that video, it's quiet. And there is, in my opinion, if you were at max power at that point, you would hear those engines spooled up and a full noise of the thrust and the roar of the engines, assuming you had that power. Now we're gonna go into that in a second why I don't think that had that power. The silence alone tells a big story that I think they did not have power shortly after takeoff. They lost thrust, I think, in all engines. And I think when that silence, you hear only the rat, it's, it, it sounds like a wind down of the engines. So in my opinion, that you should be hearing in that video, the thrust. And if you can see, if you listen to other videos on a go around, you will hear that thrust. They go full power, it's called toga, takeoff go around. They're gonna go full power and you should hear the roar of those engines, even if it's continuing to send, for whatever reason, if they lost the lift, you should hear that noise. So that's the only thing I would add to Captain Steve as far as that. You know, and I, I talk, I'm friends with Captain Steve. I talked to him last week and we, we're doing an interview tomorrow. And so we're going to talk more about this. But let's continue on and talk about this double engine failure. And this double engine failure to me is the only plausible thing that's going on right now, considering that they had a mayday call, you, the rat was deployed. And it looked very stable controlled as it descended. It looks like the plane just engine flamed out. Now, why that could happen? I don't know. I guess we could, we could get into that, right? A dual engine failure. I said in my original video that it could be contaminated fuel. And now I think I saw Captain Steve say that as well. I think that is literally the most likely story. Now, remember, how could you get a dual engine failure? Maybe contaminated fuel, maybe both engines just somehow malfunctioned. The odds of that are, I can't even imagine if that's true. I don't think that happened. But again, we're going to think of all possibilities. 
The only other way that you lose the power if it wasn't mechanical and a problem with the plane is if you turned off the auto throttle and you go ahead and pull the power back to idle, okay? That's one way. The only other way is if you do the fuel cutoff switch. If you cut off the fuel, now technically, I guess you could argue if you pulled the fire switches too, you could do that, but the fuel cutoff. I'm not saying that. I'm just letting you know, these are the ways that you could lose power or and or turn off the engines. Not make, I'm not even going to go there on a theory or an assumption, but I'll let you draw your own conclusions on what if that could happen or not. Okay, so here is where I would say I don't necessarily um, disagree with Captain Steve. I just have a different theory. So in his original video, Captain Steve said that he believed that the, the first officer might have mistakenly put the flaps up instead of the gear. After he reviewed more videos in his second video, he moved that slot to number two as a two possibility. My thought is that Captain Steve thinks that maybe that's still a possibility. I would say it's not for this reason. If we look closely here at the takeoff, there's something that you can notice if you take, if you look very closely, the gear, the main landing gear on the 787 is tilted forward. The only reason that the gear will tilt forward is if the landing gear is selected up. So let's go ahead and watch this video of the 787 gear coming up and watch closely. Gear selected up, click, tilts forward. And if you compare that to the video, that's exactly what happened. And the gear is tilted forward. So this to me indicates, I'll go ahead and stop playing this video. This to me indicates that the gear was correctly selected up and not the flaps. Now, who knows, maybe he selected the flaps first and then realized he needed to put the gear up. I, I guess it's a possibility. But the fact that the gear, and here's where I looked at the systems, this gear, the tilt on this gear is operated separately. And it is supposed to, if you recycle the gear, if it comes up, even if, it, if you push it up and then put it back down, it's supposed to, once it gets down, to go in the landing position and tilt back. The fact that it stayed locked, I think they had a full engine flame out, which means they lost electrical power and that that was the best it could do. So either two things happened. They said, we're going down and we're going to put that gear back down because if you're going to land in a city, you might as well have the gear down. It's better than not, right? Uh, you know, the only time you leave it up is probably over water. Or maybe maybe you could argue trees, but I'm, that's, I'm, I digress. I'm getting off on a rabbit trail. I think that there's two things that happened. You went to put the gear up, both engines flame out, and the hydraulics, the hydraulic system subsequently goes out and it drops back down into place just from gravity because that rat is not going to power that gear back up. First thing that happens on the plane, on the, the 787, when you pull the gear up is it tilts forward and that's so that it can clear the doors and get back up into the bay. So I think they went gear up, total electrical system, and then the gear didn't even get to the point. If it did get out, it quickly went back down into the position and that's where it stayed. So that's my theory. And I think when I talk to Captain Steve tomorrow, I think he's going to agree with me that with this evidence and information that the gear was tilted forward points to that the gear was brought up with the rat deployed. I think that we're looking at strictly straight double engine failure. Now, how could we have a double engine failure? I don't know. And that's a good segue into my last point that most pilots, including myself, believe that even with the gear down and possibly the flaps in the wrong position, that airplane, especially a 787 and those engines, should have easily been able to escape with full power out of that position that it was. So something was wrong there. And then the fact that it completely just lost lift, went up and started going back down, tells me that it wasn't necessarily something wrong with the flap. So I think those three points. So the fact that we have the rat deployed, the gear is tilted forward. We had a mayday call. Tells me that there was just a complete loss of electrical power and most likely both engines. Now, now we can argue. I don't know how you lose both engines. I mean, that is, to me, is completely un insane. I do not understand it. That is something that we're going to, at this point, we cannot draw a definitive conclusion as to what would cause 
both engines like that to just flame out. We can speculate, right? There's only, as I said before, there can be the dual engine failure, right? For whatever reason, they just failed at the same time. Almost nearly impossible, but I guess it could happen. The power could have been pulled to idle with the auto throttle off or the fuel cutoff switches could have been pulled. Other than that, it doesn't make a lot of sense what happens. So once we get all the data and stuff, that's when we can make more of a, you know, a definitive conclusion. I would like to real quick clarify my last video. You know, when I said it was three hours after the crash, I was just giving basic information. As I said, most of the stuff holds up, but we could eliminate it. Remember, I said we can eliminate the bird strike. You know, we're confident that was not what caused it. Watching with all this, I would say it's very likely that this pilot error was not a factor here, right? It could be, but I would say this points to some other type of malfunction. And again, remember, I said dual engine failure, and I also said contaminated fuel. Captain Steve also brought up uh, contaminated fuel in a second video. And I think something like that is where we're going because I can't fathom how you would lose both engines going to take off. But either way, tell me what I missed. Tell me what you think I got right. And I would appreciate your comments. And let me know what you think. And until next time, stay safe.